everybody welcome back to another unscripted desk video um today's gonna be a little bit different because it's not a vlog and it's not like an equipment showing i'm just going to sit down and talk about relationships and how cp can affect those um for me so quick disclaimer before i get into that this video is only based on my personal experiences and things that i've had um happen to me with different relationships with people um, and I'm not trying to stereotype or generalize anyone else with CP or tie in their experiences. This is purely personal and what I've gone through. So this is not meant to stereotype anybody else or generalize anybody else with CP and their experiences. This is purely personal and just about my experiences and nobody else's. So with that out of the way, let's begin with the video. So I think a very natural place to start would be with um, strangers and how people's first impacts with me and strangers' first impressions can be impacted by my CP. So, um, I think that one main thing that happens to me a lot with strangers is, um, staring. Lots and lots of staring of people of all ages, and anybody always, for as long as I can remember, anytime I would go out, I would get stared at, which that happens less now, of course, because quarantine, but, um, anywhere I go, for as long as I can remember, I've been stared at, which is understandable because I do look different, but the other thing that happens a lot is, um, blunt comments that can sometimes be rude so blunt questions blunt comments stuff like that so one example was i had just had a very important and drastic knee operation it was in july of 2019 and as a result i had to be in a special type of wheelchair that propped up my knee at all times because it needed to be elevated and so i'm going through the grocery store with my parents in this wheelchair and I'm going down the aisle and my mom is pushing me and there's this lady and she sees me, turns around and goes, well, what happened to you? And I, and my mom says, my mom gives me this look like, what? And I, and I start to answer and I don't know what to say to this lady. So I kind of, I'm quiet for a second. I'm like, mm, what do I say here? And my mom says, oh, um, and she starts to stutter and not know what to say. And the lady says, did you get in a fight? And my mom goes, no, she had knee surgery. And the lady just looks so embarrassed. And I was like, oh, um, people ask that. Like, I, I am genuinely surprised sometimes when people are that just straight up blunt and sometimes rude um, when they are asking questions to people who look different and it kind of stuck with me and bothered me when people would do that again i'd be like mm, do you really think that's okay to ask mm, just a question so that happens a lot is um staring and blunt questions but the other thing that happens a lot which really makes me sad is when a young child and i'm talking like toddlers under six years old here they are curious and they like see me in a store and they're like why does she look the way she does which with younger children it's especially understandable because of their age they don't understand and so they'll come up to me and they'll like give me this questioning look like why does she look the way she does and they'll go up to their parent and whoever they're with and they'll be like i mean why does she look that way and the thing that makes me saddest is when parents kind of make their kid be quiet and kind of make them go away from me and here's why that makes me so upset. So when a parent tells a child not to come up and approach somebody who looks different, that tells the kid talking to people who look different is not okay, I should not do that. And for me at least personally, having somebody ask me politely, what condition do you have or what, or a young child being like, why do you use a wheelchair or whatever that warms my heart because they're genuinely curious and they are taking a minute to speak to me and trying to understand why i am the way i am and when adults tell their children or the kids that they're around not to come up and ask me it hurts me because it makes me feel like you're telling that person that that young kid that coming up and talking to someone who is different and asking them why they are the way they are is not okay now it's different than being rude and blunt as an adult because as an adult being rude and being blunt is still rude because you're an adult you are being rude if you're just being straight up like why do you look that way 
But if you're a kid and you've never seen anyone like that before, then I think it's okay to come up and be like, why, why do you use a wheelchair? And that is the thing that makes me saddest, is that sometimes kids can have better etiquette with adults than adults do um, with people with disabilities. At least in my case, they have had sometimes the kids have had better manners than the adults about asking why we look the way we look and what happened to us and or what happened to me at least and sometimes the adults don't even have that level of etiquette and they just gawk which is disheartening i will sometimes go to stores and have grown adults stare at me for extended periods of time and there have been instances where there was this one time I was walking in a store with my brother and my brother turns to me and he says, if one more person keeps staring at you for so long, I'm gonna turn to them and say, don't you know staring is rude? And there are times of course when I feel like saying that, but my, my thought process is it's better to educate people than to get angry at them. So I try my best to educate kids um, and to explain to them why I am the way I am because it I need it, them to understand that it's okay to talk to us and to talk to disabled people and that it's important that they understand and it absolutely warms my heart when parents allow their kids to ask these questions and don't shy away from it um that is one of my favorite things is when I see a parent come up to me and have their kid ask me and like the parent kind of is gentle and explains it and I think that that is absolutely a lovely way to show your kid that it's okay to talk to someone who looks different. All right, so that's the strangers portion. And so now we'll move on to um, three different categories. First one, uh, young children and how they, when I have like young acquaintances and how they um, are acquaintances with me and like very like not close friends, how they react to me um peers in my grade or like just above my grade or around my age and how those are affected when they're my acquaintances um and then adults and people older than me much much older than me and how they treat me as acquaintances so we'll start with young kids and this is kind of what i said earlier where they don't really know how to react to me at first and then when they kind of become my friend they're like oh it's just sadie she's the girl in the wheelchair and she's this and that and I don't mind that really because they never see people like me in society. I am like a unique person to them, which is great um, that they see me as unique and special. But um, it doesn't bother me, especially when like three, four or five year olds think that because at least they are taking notice that I am, that I'm here because a lot of other people don't really do that. <laughs> As funny and sad as that sounds it's true but so that's the young the young kids it's not really ever a big issue with them the other category the next category is um, like peers people my age or like a little above my age a little below my age in my age range pretty much and this one is complicated Wow so when I have acquaintances who are around my age it gets weird because at that point, at least in my mind, those kids have probably seen at least one disabled person in their lives. But just the way that some people treat me, there's a couple of different ways that my peers can treat me and there's a couple of different ways that they um, perceive me. So the first is people, some people just flat out ignore me and they're just like, mm, just her or whatever. And this can sometimes annoy me and sometimes be a bit of a blessing because it's like, at least you're not staring. You're just kind of letting me be. And then sometimes it can be sad because it's like, are you ignoring me because of who I am and because of what I can't change? Um, but usually that one's not as big of a problem. The next one is the um, fake friend, as I like to call them. So... I don't know if anyone else who's in a minority has ever had anything like this, but when, because I'm disabled, I've had a lot of people try to be friends with me so that they can look good. Because when you're friends with a disabled person, 
you look good in front of teachers, in front of parents, in front of adults in the world, in front of society. And so I've had a lot of people who have been pretending, to, who have pretended to be my friend in the past. And it's not just people like at my school, but it's just kids in general, like kids that I would know from anywhere would be extra nice to me just because of who I am. And that would infuriate me because it's like, you're not even taking an effort to get to know me. You just know that I look different and that I am different, but only in one way. So those are that type of peer. And then another is the person who does not, and this one kind of ties in with the last one, um, and this can span across all age groups, but the person or people who do not see past the wheelchair. Um, and these, I think, are one of the most common. And that is the person who only sees you, or only sees me, in my case, f for your wheelchair and for the fact that you are a different person. And because of this, they might treat me a different way. So they might treat me in a mean way of like, being rude or they might treat me in a coddling way of like being extra nice and so this is kind of like a broader like people who only see me as my disability and do not see me as anything else and this one can be for any of the age groups it's really common in my case I've had a lot of people like this and in a lot of cases it's sad because these people have good intentions but the fact that they don't bother seeing past the wheelchair into who I am can sometimes really bother me because it's like, you only see me for something that I can't change. And you might see me in a positive light because of that. You might see me in a negative light because of that. But you don't see me as me. You see me as my condition. And that is remarkably frustrating because I am not just my condition. I am a person too. And that is... Um, one of the unfortunately most common people I will ever encounter in terms of friends and peers and acquaintances and adults and children, anybody, all people who are like that can be any age. So I, I encounter a lot of those of any age ever. So that's one of the most common, which is sad, but, um, Sorry if you hear door slamming, I'm filming in my house. But, so that's that. And then adults, adults can be weird because there are a couple of different types of adults. Um, uh, so the first type that happens a lot is just the staring person. So like the person that even after they've met you, they kind of just awkwardly watch you or it's like, okay, you're just kind of watching me because I look the way I look. What do you, do you, do you want something? And you know, like, and then that person is usually pretty straightforward. I just kind of have adult friends or like my parents' friends sometimes. It'll be like, they'll just watch, you know, it'll be weird, but they're usually not a huge problem. They usually don't bother me too much. It's just because they're curious, I guess. But the other type of adult that really bothers me is the ignoring one where they just kind of don't openly discriminate, but they say things behind closed doors or they do things behind closed doors where it's like, they're not discriminating, but they aren't being entirely fair just because of something you can't control. And that is frustrating because it does happen a lot, but like there will be a lot of times where and these are more toward acquaintances, not usually people I know, but just like people that I like just have met or like barely acquaintances where they'll be like, not necessarily saying, no, you can't do this, but people will underestimate me a lot. And I had one person where I was doing a thing and this person is talking to me and I'm talking about inventing or something. And this person goes, wow, you're really smart. And I was like, and they had said it like they were surprised that I was smart. They weren't like, oh, you're really smart. Like in a complimentary kind of way. They were saying it like they were genuinely surprised that I even had an ounce of intelligence in my brain. Um, and that bothered me because I was like, just because of who I am, you automatically assume that I'm not smart. Like, 
it's what so that didn't make much sense to me um and those types of people really start like to annoy me because people like to assume things um straight off when they meet me when i have cp they like to assume certain things about me that are very wrong and again this can happen in a lot of age groups they say things behind closed doors about what they assume like i'm not very smart they might assume that i'm not smart they might assume that i'm not like they might assume that i can't do anything and that's very 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 frustrating um and again it happens in most of the age groups that i've mentioned um and the other type of adult and this one is bittersweet to me because these people have good intentions, but I, I like to call them the cobblers because they treat me like I'm a lot younger than I am and they treat me like I can't do very much. And I encounter these people a lot. And it's sad because they, they really do have good intentions, but the way that they execute them is by assuming that I can't do things and that I'm not necessarily incompetent, but that I'm not very smart. And so they talk to me, they talk down to me like I'm young and they don't say anything in a mean-spirited way, but they do say things in kind of a, a sugar-coated kind of sense, where it's like, I understand this, you don't need to dumb it down for me, and I can do this myself, you don't need to do it for me. And that is one of another type of frustrating thing that happens to me a lot um, with a lot of people. A lot of people do that to me, just random people that I meet that I kind of know or like don't fully know. Um, and that happens with those people a lot. So that's the um, types of people in terms of like what people, types of people do for people with CP and like how those different types of people and how my CP affects my relationships with them. So that's that part. One other type of person that I would like to talk about is the jealous person. And this one, this one gets me fired up. Sorry if I sound like I'm ranting for a bit in this part, but so this person happens um, with mostly peers that are around my age where I'll get a special privilege because I am the way I am. Because like, I can't go out in the cold for an extended period of time. So when it's a certain temperature outside, I get to stay in for recess in class. But when, I get that there are a lot of people that are very jealous because they're like, oh, I want to stay in. Or in gym, I have an adaptive workout in my gym class. Oh, I want to have an adaptive workout. Oh, Sadie gets everything she wants just because she's disabled. So that one happens a lot. A lot of people are like, oh, she gets whatever she wants just because she's disabled. Oh, she wins the invention conventions just because she's disabled. And that is one of the most absolutely frustrating things that I have ever encountered in terms of people and the way they treat me because I don't know if people understand this but it is so hurtful to tell someone who's never ever ever known what it feels like to walk or to run a 5k or to ride a bike without help or to do anything like that or to play a sport how do you think it's okay to tell them they're lucky for having to miss out on those things? And these people, I think, don't understand the ramifications of what they're saying and how hurtful it is. But sometimes I, I start to wonder, do these people think before they speak? And I think that's one of the main problems is that a lot of people don't think before they speak. And that causes a lot of issues in the sense of it's like, they don't think with, before they speak, so they just blurt out something that can be offensive. And I've had a lot of people tell me I'm lucky for having this or that or the other thing. And it always stings, no matter how I, how no matter how old I get. I've had people tell me that I get good grades just because I'm disabled. I've had people tell me I win the inventions conventions just because I'm disabled. I've had people tell me like or tell behind my back that I'm entitled and get whatever I want um, just because of I'm disabled. I've had people say that behind my back and I've had friends tell me that they've said that. And when I find stuff like that out, it's incredibly hurtful because I work hard for what I, what I want and I have to miss out on a lot of things I would absolutely love to try. So 
when people say stuff like that, that I'm lucky for missing out on that, even if they haven't really thought it through all the way, it still really does bother me. So that's the one other type of person that I wanted to go over. But that person I have t trouble dealing with because of how hurtful they are. Usually that kind of thing just irks me a lot. Now, one final thing I'd like to say here is that by no means is everybody like in one of these categories. I have met so many amazing, beautiful people who have been so kind, so amazing, so understanding, not in a coddling way, but in just a genuine, loving, incredible, caring way. And it amazes me because I have, I've met my fair share of rotten eggs, but I've rotten my, I met my fair share of golden ones too. Shout out to my friend Addie. I'll link her channel in the description. She's the best girl in the world. And I have so many great friends at my school and I genuinely think my siblings have become more caring people because they've understood how to be respectful to someone who's different. And so shout out to all three of my siblings. They're all great. I love them a lot. And I've met so many great adults who congratulate me, but they don't overdo it. And they tell me I'm inspirational, but they tell me I'm inspirational about things that I should be told I'm inspirational for, like inventing. They don't tell me I'm inspirational just because I have a disability. There have been so many loving people who have just been so understanding and amazing and incredible, and I cannot say it enough, this is not everybody. Not all of these people fit into one of these categories that I've put in this video. There are so many great, incredible people who are so kind to disabled people, but who are so, they treat us like normal people, which is exactly what I want. I wanna be treated like a normal girl because I am a normal girl. But aside from having CP, I'm a 13 year old who likes to invent and likes to read and likes to shop and likes to do what every other 13 year old girl likes to do. And I've met so many great people who have risen above and beyond and done incredible jobs being so amazing to me. And I have had friends at school who are so protective of people who call me entitled. It's, it's really, I say to behold, it's beautiful to, for every five rotten eggs, you meet one of the shiniest golden ones in the bunch. And it's incredible to meet those people. And I, love all of them and i don't want anyone watching the video to think they're like this ever this is just to kind of show that there are people who treat me differently because of who i am but no no shade to anyone because no not all everybody is like this i can't nail it in enough not everybody fits into one of these categories most people are amazing incredible gorgeous people who are great and that is one other important message that i had to drill in because yes there are a lot of people who are mean and rude and mean-spirited and they don't treat me right whether that's in a positive or a negative way whether they have good intentions or not they do sometimes get on my nerves and not treat me correctly but a lot of most like 95 percent of people are amazing incredible people who are absolutely amazing so that is one thing I just had to address. Because um, I'm sure after a whole video of me ranting, some of you watching are probably like, do I really do that? And the answer is probably not. There's just a lot of people who do. Um, but yeah, so that's that bit out of the way. And so that's probably gonna be the end of today's video. I know it was a little bit different, but I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you want me to do more videos like this, of like how X um, applies to CEP or how CEP, um, how CEP affects X, Y, and Z, then I can do that because I have lots of stories and stuff to tell. And you, if you guys want me to do a like really funny, rude strangers compilation or something, I have lots of those stories as well. And uh, once again, like I said in my last video, just put in the comments with any video ideas you have. And as always, I will put my Facebook and Twitter links in the description of the video. And I hope you all enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next video.